COVID-19 testing has become a new normal during the pandemic. And if you followed the news, you would have seen some of these terms being used. However, these tests and their results can get confusing, such as the case with Jade Rasif's helper. Jade, an online personality and healthcare worker, had a major COVID scare when her Indonesian helper tested COVID-19 positive after an early quarantine release. Here's what went down. On arrival in Singapore on April 11th, Jade's helper tested negative on the PCR test and positive on the serology test. At that point in time, she was said to had already been infected and subsequently recovered from COVID-19 infection. But about two weeks later, the helper was tested again, and this time, her PCR test was positive. MOM later said that further assessment on the test results showed that the helper was shedding dead viral fragments and was not currently infectious. So, to better understand what the tests and results mean, I spoke with Dr. Paul Tambaya, who is an infectious disease specialist and the president-elect of the International Society of Infectious Diseases. So, Dr. Tambaya, can you tell me more about the PCR test? Okay, the PCR test looks for nucleic acid. Uh, in the case of a virus like SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19, it's RNA. In the case of a human being or most bacteria, it's DNA. You know, you're familiar with uh, crime scene investigations and they look and see whose DNA is on a, on a murder weapon. And that's how they nail down who the culprit is. So it's very similar. You want to find out which virus has been going into somebody's nose or throat or lung. So you do a swab and then you match the RNA that you find with the whole library of viruses that you have. You look for a particular sequence that's, uh, that's typical of that virus. And if it shows up, then bingo, you have the culprit. Okay, then what does it mean to test positive on the PCR test but not be infectious? The day before the onset of symptoms or, or the day of symptoms is believed to be the most infectious day. There are some studies looking at measuring the amount of virus in people and what they do is they look at how many of their contacts got infected. And there seems to be a suggestion that if your virus load was below a certain level, your chances of infecting somebody else is, is very low. But it's not an uh, absolute number. As a supplementary test, they actually do a blood test and they see whether your body has developed antibodies to the virus. Usually you don't develop antibodies until day five, six or seven of the infection. This supplementary test is the serology test, which detects antibodies to COVID-19 from a blood sample as a marker of past infection. The addition of the serology test was to help MRM identify workers who have recovered from an old COVID-19 infection and have antibodies and can therefore be released from SHN. So they put two pieces of information together. If your antibody is positive and the viral count, they use a term called the CT value, suggests that you have very low numbers of virus, then they think that you're more likely to be non-infectious. Then, what does it mean to shed dead viral fragments? You know, they test them multiple times and then they find they're antibody positive and these are the people that are shedding fragments. After their immune system has kind of destroyed the virus, you've got little bits and pieces left over. Also, from June 16, 2021, DIY COVID-19 antigen rapid tests are available for purchase in Singapore. Can you tell me more about this test? The antigen rapid test, what it tests is the protein that's made by the virus. You could look at it as like a blood stain and you just check for the blood group then that tells you roughly, so the guy says, I'm innocent, I'm a B positive, and then you find an O negative blood, then you know that he's not the culprit. So the antigen test is a lot less uh, specific than the PCR test, uh, but on the other hand, you get the results very quickly. Okay, so to recap, there is the PCR test, antigen rapid test, and serology test. The PCR and antigen rapid test aims to diagnose COVID-19, while the serology test checks for evidence of a past infection. PCR tests detect the virus's RNA, which is more specific, and the antigen rapid test detects the virus's protein, or antigen, which is less specific. Finally, the serology test detects antibodies developed from a past infection. And to end off, I asked Dr. Tambaya what does it mean for COVID-19 to become endemic? Every pandemic has become endemic. Even the most recent one, the H1N1 2009, caused a pandemic. But now H1N1 2009 is in our regular seasonal influenza. The Spanish flu of 1918 to 1919, it became the dominant strain of flu from 1918 all the way up to 1957, all through the Second World War. So every virus or germ or pathogen which reaches the pandemic stage, in other words, where it spreads all over the world, it will become endemic. You cannot put the genie back in the bottle, but with vaccination and with good treatments, it, it doesn't cause too much of a problem. So it's just a matter of time. And I guess the question is, uh, when is the WHO going to say the pandemic is over, it's become endemic? <laughs>